see Psalm 2 calling kings to kiss the sun as a gospel call to repentance and faith, something separate from that, something more from that, how, how would you see that? Well, you know, since it says, lest his wrath be kindled, uh, you could certainly apply that to a general uh, gospel call, but this is specifically directed to kings and to judges. So it has, kings and judges have a specific application. Um, and I, I think we didn't get into this today, and, and I, I don't think we will have time to at all, even during this conversation. But I see Daniel 7, I don't know what you, you see in Daniel 7, but I see Daniel uh, 7 as the enthronement of Christ after his, uh, his ascension. And so when we talk about his active ruling, uh, eschatologically, there has to be some discussion of what is Christ doing now? Uh, is he actively ruling? And is there a, full, a prophetic fulfillment in Psalm? Because, because again, remember what he does in his uh, in his trial in, in Mark chapter 14. He conflates Psalm 110 and Daniel 7, and that's what causes the high priest to say, "Well, you've heard the blasphemy; he tears his clothes." And what 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 more evidence do we need? So, if that is the fulfillment, then what is the nature of Christ reigning right now? And how should that then impact our interaction uh, with the world and with our presentation, for example, right now? Uh, let's, let's, let's use the big things going on right now, transgenderism. Um, can, I, can I have 30 seconds to tell the story? I was on, I was on uh, the Dr. Drew show on CNN, I think it was in 2016, on transgenderism. I was on with the same guy. Did you all see what that, that former army pilot who manifests as a woman now when Ben Shapiro was on. He took this big old honking hand and he put it on Ben Shapiro's shoulder and threatened him with a deep manly voice uh, as a woman. Uh, I was on with him. And uh, at, at one point during the conversation, uh, I quoted Matthew chapter 19, where Jesus says, from the beginning, God made them male and female. And uh, one, of the, one of Dr. Drew's sidekicks basically says, well, you know, that's just one religious leader. And my response was, this is a religious leader that predicted his own death, burial, and resurrection, then died, was buried, rose again on the third day, and descended into heaven. When you can pull that off, we'll worry about your opinions about these things. Till then, he's Lord. Amen. And he had absolutely no idea what to, what to even say in response to that. So what I'm saying is, what do we, when we say to the magistrate, are we talking about an enthroned king? Who is reigning right now and I think that's 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 to me uh, something that has been clarified since 2020 we've all had to think about this more than I, I would you all agree that this would have been a very different conversation in 2019 mm -hmm. and if so why and which direction has it moved because I remember when Grace reopened and John MacArthur preached that sermon. I'm sitting here going, hot dog, listen to that. Because <laughs> I'm going, we're, we're, we aren't moving the other direction. We're moving much toward, much more toward a direction that says to the state, um, Christ is Lord and he, he, you, there, are, there are limits here. And by the way, you've already got me in trouble. Thank you very much. Because you started off your, your talk identifying me as a Christian nationalist, which I've never identified myself as. Um, if Christian national, if, as, I, as I said in my dialogue with Doug Wilson, if Christian nationalist means less as a nation as God is Yahweh, and sin is a reproach to any people, I think we'd all probably fall into that category. Um, but obviously much more is being said now than that type of a simplistic type of a situation. And so, uh, yeah, you, 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 got me, you got me in trouble with that one. Uh, so I, I, that's not terminology I use myself. So unless you're going to say all post-millennialists are Christian nationalists, um, that, that, that causes a, a, a problem. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, what, I was, what I was trying to get at, in all seriousness, uh, genuine apologies for the error. What I was trying to get at was that there are people who track with you who would claim the label Christian yes. nationalist yeah. 
they are post-millennialist as you are, um, and yet their approach to the issue would be based on the gospel. And what I was thinking there was more like how a Doug Wilson has framed things in his recent book, Mere, I think, is it Mere Christendom? Yes. Yeah. And so I attributed that to you directly. What I meant, what I was trying to get at was there's a stream here right. that would affirm some form. Well, I, was, I wasn't offended. I, it's just not terminology that I use. And I've done two Sweater Vest dialogues with Doug, one on the Wolf Book uh, and one on uh, Mere Christendom. And if anybody's listened to those, my concerns about sacralism, the breaking down of the distinctions between family, church, state, the, the sphere of sovereignty has been consistent in all of that. I've, I've tried to be very, very straightforward in that. Uh, but at the same time, I think there's, I, I tried to explain that the, why we did what we did with masks, vaccines, uh, the seals, why all of that stuff has a foundational basis. And I, and I think in all of this, we're all seeing that what we what we were, and we're all old enough, so, well, okay, sorry, Jeff. Um, most of us are old enough that we were active in the 80s. And I just sit back and I go, man, things have changed. And for me, I'm just simply admitting, I accepted things out of tradition in the 80s and 90s, and I was never forced to think about it. Now we're being forced to think about it. And I'm concerned that we're shooting at each other way, way, way too early. I mean, my position is we're not in a position to answer a lot of the questions right now. Because my understanding is the only way that this is ever going to really manifest itself is when there has been a massive move of the Spirit of God. And, you know, when, when who was it that mentioned the Christian prince? Um, was Jack it Moore did and I did. Okay. See, see. That can't happen until the vast majority of the people are truly converted. And then, how could you avoid having a, a, a prince who is a Christian? But I, I'm very concerned about the idea of making a Christian prince like we used to have. I guess some people are using the terminology of Christendom 1.0. Well, okay. That really, really concerns me. That kind of, that kind of language really, really concerns me. Um, because from my perspective, if there's no change in the heart, you're gonna get the exact same results. And the results were uh, Fritz Herba in, in the bottom of a, of a well, basically. But we've gotta struggle with the fact that Luther knew he was there. Luther knew he was there. That's our heritage. So how do we deal with that? And as a Baptist, I, I have other things I have to add to that. <laughs> Yeah, I um, appreciate that. Good first question. Uh, let me jump in and 